स्टार्ट सर इट इज यूजल इन ऑल पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फॉर द प्रेजिडेंट एट द ओपनिंग ऑफ ए सेशन टू एड्रेस बोथ हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इट हैज बीन क्रिटिसाइज एज बींग मेयरली अनरेशन ऑफ फैक्ट्स विच हैव हैपन्ड ड्यूरिंग द पास्ट ईयर बट दैट इज द यूजल थिंग एज ऑनरेबल मेम्बर्स नो विच हैपन्स इन मोस्ट ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्स विच वर्क अंडर पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आई एम श्योर दैट द ऑनरेबल मेम्बर्स आर अवेयर दैट इंडिया हैज ऑलवेज स्टूड फॉर पीस एंड एवर सिंस हर इंडिपेंडेंस हैज डन वॉट शी कुड प्रिजर्व टू पीस इन द वर्ल्ड both in korea and in indo china our efforts led to a cease fire and for the first time with the settlement of the indo china problem there was no shooting war anywhere in the world but now again there are war clouds especially in the far east as has been emphasized by the prime minister time and again patience and tolerance are necessary to solve the tangle in formosa our government have recognized the chinese people's republic as the government of china and have recognized the chinese claim to the cairo declaration if the cairo declaration is to have any value then it is fairly certain that formosa is a part of china but at the same time one cannot forget the fact that things have got to be tackled patiently if this problem of formosa is to be solved in a peaceful manner that will take time and it is towards that end i am sure that our prime minister is working so that there will be no clash in the far east with regard to the question of formosa this has been prominently mentioned in the address of the president we hope that patience will be exercised by both the sides to solve this question and there will be no incident which might lead to serious consequences our agreement with china on tibet which formed the basis of the joint statement by china's and our prime ministers regarding panchashila must from the main principle through which international tension can be eased and finally peace established i am glad sir that recently the king of laos has accepted the idea of the five principles put forward in this declaration it is usual in the present time of atomic age to talk about the dangers of the use of atom for warlike purposes the question is whether the new instrument in the hands of men is going to be used for the benefit of humanity or for the destruction of humanity and human civilization as we know it today both the united states and the union 
of Soviet socialist republics possess atomic weapons and the United Kingdom government has now planned to manufacture hydrogen bombs for their security as the prime minister has pointed out time and again our country is not interested in the production of atomic weapons but we are immensely interested in the use of atomic energy for peaceful purposes there is no doubt that in the interest of human civilization these weapons should not only banned but destroyed the question is who is going to take the risk there have been appeals that as the usa was the first nation to manufacture these dangerous weapons and use them therefore they should set an example by destroying the bombs in their possession stockpiling of atomic weapons should lead to dangerous situation and somebody therefore ought to make a start in the matter of the destruction of these weapons if moral standards are to be the guiding factors it will be a great help to humanity if this step can be taken if only there is courage to do so the ussr will have to follow suit but unfortunately there is the fear complex but nation want to protect themselves and want to guard themselves against any surprise attacks by the other side so the arrangements race goes on they forget that this mentally will eventually lead to war when one can speak from strength but they forget that two can play at this game so long as this view is held the armament race will go and on tension must certainly increase the conference which meets in london in a few solution the complete banning of nuclear weapons must be the first step that they can enforce should strive at and i hope that under proper international supervision this step will be taken but connected with this is the question of the reduction of conventional armaments there must be a realistic approach to this problem the ussr today possess so much strength that it should be the first to agree to reduce its land army in the interest of the good relations that should exist between nations one hopes that it will understand this position and take steps to get this done i am glad that the atomic energy commission of the united nations have recognized that india has a part to play in this field and has asked our leading nuclear scientist dr bhava to preside over the conference proposed to be held at geneva the ussr has promised to show how she has been able to set up a nuclear plant producing economic power but great steps have been taken in this connection also in the uk and the recent report on atomic power placed as a white paper before the house of commons shows 
that by about 1980 there will be about 12 to 13 stations working in various parts of that country to produce electricity and power and peaceful purposes this is a great step in our country which will benefit by the steps that are being taken because our intention is to use atomic power for peaceful purposes